The newest module I have is a control room module and an insert switcher. It's the TC4. The main signal path is completely passive, which means you can turn it off and it still works because there's no audio electronics in the signal path. Very cool. You have four stereo inserts that you can select. Number one has this compressors. Number two is the EQ, but maybe you'd like to hear the order switch. So there's a flip switch. So now the compressor is on number two and the EQ comes first. Kind of like on a mastering console. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's also a complete insert pre-post switch. Okay. There's an alternate speaker for your mains or your alternates. There's two monitor inputs that you can select from for level matching. Mm -hmm. There's a mono switch, left and right mutes to isolate speakers, and a phase reverse, which in works in conjunction with the mono to give you the side channels to work okay. on. Engineer's headphone, and that's the TC4. That's cool. What if I wanted to just have another option for alternate speakers or different inputs? Uh, the M3PH Mark III has the same 47 position stepped attenuator. There's four selections that you can A, B sources. There's three alternate speakers that you can A, B. And on number three, there's an internal switch that makes it fixed, so you could send it out to a pair of meters. There's a mono switch, left and right mute, and a phase reverse, which gives you the side channels again. And it's using the same 47 position stepped attenuator that I use in all my modules. Awesome. Everything's on XLRs in the back. That's fantastic. Um, if I wanted to use it, use a monitor controller as the centerpiece of a console and I needed talkback, what would I use? Oh, uh, talkback, the TB4M. It has the four stereo ins, a mono switch, mains or alternates. It comes with a talkback microphone, mm -hmm. talkback level, and you can activate it here. There's a jack on the back. You can also have a producer switch to activate the talkback. The Q master level is here, and that signal can be either the control room signal or a dedicated Q that you build in your DAW and send in on the back panel. The engineer's headphone can be either of those two signals, too. Um, is there any option where I would have more flexibility for the artist to monitor? The QS8 Mark II has two stereo ins, mains and alternate speakers, the same talk back with level control and activation. Then there's a Q mixing section. The Q input with music coming from the DAW is here. And then you have AUX3, which sums with the Q mix. Okay. So if you were doing a vocal overdub and somebody wanted more me and the headphones, you could just reach over and give it to them here instead of searching around in your DAW screens. When you get the balance the way you like it, there is a Q master level out to the headphones. And then when you push this button, it becomes a summing box. There's four stereo ins, stereo one, two, the Q input and AUX3 all sum together analog and exit on a pair of XLRs on the back panel. And that makes it really easy if you're doing tracking and you're listening to your DAW here, maybe the drummer wants a click track and nobody else wants to hear that click track except for the drummer. The mix output is always available, so you could put the click track on number two, the drummer would still get this Q mix, and you could send the mix output to the drummer's headphones and the rest of the artists will be listening to this and they won't have the click. That's a QS8 Mark II. Awesome.